What's going on? This is Royce back with another video of Java Essential Training Series. So in this video, I'll be talking about polyformism in Java. So polyformism in Java is a concept by which we can perform a single action by different ways. Polyformism is derived from two Greek words, poly and morph. The word poly means many and morph means forms. So polyformism means many forms. There are two types of polyformism in Java, compile time poly, uh, polyformism and runtime polyformism. We can perform polyformism in Java by method overloading and method overriding. So we're going to look at an example now. Uh, I'm going to use a Windows, um, a new feature, it's called Sketchpad. All right, so here I'm going to give you an example. So there is an example of polyformism. You probably used it without even thinking about it. So let's look at this plus sign. What is this? Okay. In many language, well, it depends. All right. So let's say we are adding two variables A and B. Okay. So if A is an int value, sorry, my writing is pretty bad because I'm using a mouse. So let's say it's an int. Okay. So what will happen? It will add these two variables. So it will add two integers, right? So let's say we have the same variables here, okay? A and plus B. So let's say now this A and this B variable is string. I don't wanna write all the string, but I'm just telling you this is a string, okay? So what will happen? The concatenation will happen this time, right? So it will add two strings with that plus operator. So polyformism is basically, it automatically detects the behavior of those variables and perform a task for us. So this behavior or method is built into a lot of languages, but we can use the same idea and concept in our own classes and our own objects. So here an example. So I'm going to erase this page and let's say I define a bank account class. So bank account class, okay. For financial application. So this bank class basically determines that it has a behaviors, account balance, a name of the owner, a withdrawal limit. So there's a lot of behaviors of this bank class, right? So we're going to create a few more classes here. So there's one class here, second here, third class here. So let's say it's a checking account class. So I'll just type C K A and then we have a savings account class. Oh, it's very hard to write. Okay. And then we have an investment account class. So I'll just say I N V E S. All right, so now let's say the share, they extend from the bank class, okay? So because we're doing that, so they will share information such as uh, account balance, savings, all right, investment, they could withdraw, they could check the account details, the owner name, right? So let's say saving accounts has another attribute which has interest rate, so interest rate whatever okay and now it gets a bit more complex so let's say if you withdraw uh, some money from your investment account right and the bank rule says that you're gonna get a penalty because without 30 days notice you cannot withdraw from the investment account so this class will have a bit more complex behavior and then that withdraw behavior was defined in this bank class. So I'm already inheriting it from the bank class, right? But I can define a more specialized version just for the investment class. And that would call uh, overriding the method of this super class. Uh, just types, this is a super class. All right, so that would call uh, overriding a method because this bank class has a withdrawal method already, but we have a different kind of uh, behavior because we cannot withdraw without 30 day notice. So I have to write another special withdraw method for this investment that would override the bank class over uh, withdraw method. 
So that's called overriding the method. I'm inheriting from the bank class and I have my own method for the investment class. So I can use that one when it's useful and I can use the bank class method when that's useful. So the polyformism lets us work with objects created in any of these classes. So I could now have an array of accounts with 10 thousands of these different objects loaded into it and I know that I can call the withdraw method on any of any one of them without knowing exactly what class it was initiated from. So it would do the correct behavior for each one just as using the plus sign would automatically switch between addition and concatenation. So it's flexible. Polyformism lets us do the right thing at the right time. When learning object-oriented programming language, polyformism is the concept that I heard a lot of people say that technically I understand it, but I just don't know where to use it. Well, that's okay. Most of your classes won't need it. We don't have to go look for polyformism situations. They occur naturally and understanding the basic idea is enough for us to move forward. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Just want to talk about what is the upcasting. So when the reference variable of a parent class are referred to an object of a child class, it is known as upcasting. Now let's look at the example, okay? So for that example, I'm going to create a class named bank. So let's create a class bank. All right, so we have a bank class now. Here I will declare and integer and I'll call it get well get interest rate okay so I'll say get interest rate all right that's the method now all right so next we're going to say return in a code block I'm going to say return um, let's say well let's say zero percent okay because this is the main class of our bank all right so and then next create another class and let's name it um a and z because it's australian uh, bank so i'll call it a and z and then here i'm going to declare int and then get interest and rest rate all right and then come down, add a code block, and then here we'll say return, and I'll give you value, let's say 3%. All right, and then create another class now. And let's say, I will say combank. Okay, that's another Bank of Australia, so I'll use that. So here, let's create another int method and say get interest rate all right and then add a code block and here we'll return for the interest rate for the comeback is pretty high so i would say 12. okay so we have four classes in our program right now but i want to create another class so because the example i gave you before it has three classes so let's say another class for nab that's another bank of australia and then we'll say int method name would be get int rest rate interest rate add a code block again and then here we'll return let's say if they're pretty good so i'd say five percent all right so we have three bank classes now each bank return a different interest rate and now we're going to go back to our bank class well let's go to the main class here in the main class now, I will create an object from the bank class. All right. One thing I didn't do is that in the X, sorry, I didn't inherit it from the bank class. So I want to make these three classes a child classes of this bank class, which is going to be a super class. So let's go back to ANZ class and let's say extends bank. All right and then change that here as well because we're going to inherit so extend let's say bank all right so these three classes would be a child class of a bank class now so here extends 
All right, and then now, sorry, bank. All right, so we have these three subclasses of the bank class. Let's go to our main class now. And here I would say, let's create an object. So I'll use the bank class to create an object and I will name it, let's say, A and Z, all right? And then it's equal to, I'll say a new keyword. And here I will use because I'm creating an object from the bank class, but because the, these three classes now are a subclass of the bank class, so I can use these three classes directly, okay? So I will say A and Z, that's it. All right, so let's create another object and I'll say com bank is equal to new, I will say, Come back, so come back. All right, so bank nab. Oops, I misspelled it. So nab, change the name is equal to new nab. All right, so now as you can see that I'm creating an object from a bank class, but these three classes are subclasses for this bank class now, so I can use the method and I can use those classes directly from the bank class now all right and then let's go down and print down something all right so i would say that's out just and then i would say a n z interest rate is and then let's add the concatenation operator and i would say a n z dot get interest rate all right so as you can see that i can access the get interest rate method which exists in the subclass of the bank class and the class name is a and z i can access that right there okay so that is kind of concept of polyformism all right so i'll give you an example of polyformism when i'm doing an overridden method in the next video so stay tuned for that as well so now i can just copy and paste this couple of times and then let's say change the values here and I'll say com bank com bank while well, I'm keep writing bank and then here change that to com bank all right here let's change that to nab so nab and I can change here nab as well all right so let's run the program now and we should get over return values as the interest rate what we define All right so we have a and z interest rate is three com interest rate is 12 and five let's go check it out so we have three 12 and five all right so that was a quick example and i try to explain at my best of polyformism so f f like Finally, I want to say that it's a concept. It's a it's a concept. So don't really worry about it, right? We'll talk about it more when I um, do a overriding method video. Uh, probably the next one. So stay tuned for that, guys. And if you have any question, let me know in the comments below. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at awaysmiza01. Thanks for watching again, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Cheers.